hi everyone welcome back to my youtube channel this is going to be a bit of a different video um so i'm not actually filming myself talking but this is going to be a voiceover of my beautiful kita's journey i've never really shared this uh, mainly because i kind of went off youtube as her kind of ridden career started um so yeah this is going to be a bit of a long one um as there's lots to tell um but yeah i'll start from the beginning so Keita was born on the 6th of April 2012 um, she was bred with me and my best friend Debbie Smith who has literally taught me everything about breeding um, she's the reason why I ended up getting the bug. So Keita is a half sister to May who was one of my main show German horses who Debbie also bred so we decided to try and breed another one and actually they are more similar than you think even though they look quite different in a way they do have their similarities so this was her literally a couple of hours old so cute look at that little tail going so for the first year of keita's life she was living with debbie um i'd go and visit her regularly and she actually then came and stayed with us for a few weeks in the summer um and one of mine and Debbie's aims was to do the futurity series with her and um, we've never done anything like it before so it was all a new learning curve um, but we gave it our best shot um, so we had to do lots of handling and make sure that her and her mum could trot in a triangle so off we went to Hartbury um, where we actually got her you know got her really well prepared i'd say and they were both very good my friend grace actually trotted zeta her mum up for me um and we had to kind of show her off to the panel and see what they thought of her so she got a first premium she scored 8.2 um and yeah she was fantastic she actually graded both as a show jumper and an event foal um, which was exciting so I hadn't even thought about her being an event horse at this point um, but the panel thought that her gallop was really good and she would make a beautiful event horse so this was a lovely experience especially considering we'd never bred a foal before and I've never done futurity and I'd always really wanted to um, and here's just a really cute picture of Luke giving her a cuddle um, during the period of her being with us um, so I could talk about baby Keita all day long, um, but I will stop going on about how cute she is and move on to the kind of more interesting things about when we started her kind of ridden career. So we actually decided not to back Keita at three years old, um, mainly because she was still quite small, even though she looked quite mature. Um, we just thought we'd give her another year before we started backing her. Um, anyway, it came about that we'd kind of decided we might have a fall from her in in her fourth year so we put her in foal at three she'd have a foal at four then we back her kind of rising five um, because anyone else who kind of breeds knows that if you breed from a horse younger it's kind of better it's you know, safer for them and then when they have a foal later in life which is something i really wanted to do and once she'd had a career and um, it would be easier to get her in foal with less complications so everyone meet Lola. She was born in 2016 um, by August Skyhawk and Appaloosa Stallion. Um, she sold literally within 24 hours to an amazing home and I'm still really good friends with those who bought her. Um, she's now kind of doing low level eventing, riding club, everything with the most wonderful rider. I'll post a picture of her um, later on at the end of this video. Um, so Lola really, I feel, made Keita. Keita absolutely adored being a mum she spent her whole nine months or whatever it was um no it's only six months i'm on about um just doting on her she was amazing but she was never protective she trusted us she let us do anything with her and we just had the most amazing six months of lola being in our lives and i really really miss her um and i am really awful at salon foals as you will kind of gather as this video goes on um so after Lola was weaned, we started um, backing Keita once she'd kind of dried up and done lots of long reining, done lots of lunging, um, and she was super easy. I had no issues with her at all. I thought she was going to be super sharp, really naughty, but no, I had a different issue. She actually wouldn't move. Um, and when I mean wouldn't move, watch these videos. So... I didn't really get many videos at first because I genuinely needed someone to chase me around the arena with a lunge whip. Um, 
But she literally did not care. She didn't want to move. She didn't go up. She didn't go left. She didn't go right. And occasionally I get her to do this. And she'd just walk a few steps and then stop. And I not long had Leo and I wasn't that nerve, um, that confident. So I probably didn't push her or give her the most wonderful start in hindsight. I probably wasn't the right rider to do it. But I really tried my best um, and tried to give her as much positive you know, experience as I possibly could. Um, you could long rein this horse. She was an angel. You could do anything with her, but she just did not want to walk. Um, so this kind of went on and on and on. We actually moved yards, um, as you'll see here, we were having the same issue. So we moved yards, which I thought may either help or not, um, and it didn't help. I was getting really kind of stuck. Um, I got other people to come and ride her. I don't have videos of this, but she was exactly the same. Um, things kind of got a little bit better. As you can see, she'd move a bit more forward. Um, but then she started getting a bit more sassy. So this is when I decided, right, we need to get the vet involved. There must be something wrong with this horse. So we spent about five grand on insurance and a couple of grand um, not on insurance to figure out what was wrong with Keita. Um, and the answer was very little. So all we found was very mild ulcers, which the vet thought wouldn't be causing this level of behaviour, but we treated for her for it anyway. Um, it made little to no difference at all. Um, also, there was a mild lesion in both hind suspensories, um, but again, the vet said it was so mild and most horses may even have a slight change like this and show no symptoms. But again, I decided no I'm going to li listen to, to, I'm just going to listen to this horse. I think there's something wrong. So the options were either we do drastic surgery on these hind suspensories, which may not even be the issue, or we give her a year in the field. So after this kind of fiasco, I decided a year in the field and we'll reassess the situation. Maybe she wasn't kind of ready to be ridden. I didn't want to push it. I just had a feeling that she wasn't in the right frame of mind or wasn't physically ready um, and with all the other people trying with her as well and having the same issue that was my kind of way forward so after this video we decided to turn her away for about 12 months and then get the vet to reassess so her. about 12 months went by of her just being in the field living a horse maturing um, and then we reassessed her um, again totally sound and nothing much changed on the scan the vet wasn't concerned said she's totally 100% sound just go for it um give her another go so that's what I did um initially I had exactly the same response to her behavior she didn't want to move forward she wouldn't even walk um but I did lots of natural horsemanship with her I did lots of groundwork and found other little keys to unlock these puzzles um, which I think is the only way to describe Keita. She just had some really weird quirks um, and weirdly everything just started to slot into place. So before I got on her um, I would literally get the stirrups and make her move off the stirrup pressure and um, this was a ritual I had even before I got on her um, and like I noticed she wasn't listening to that even like with the long reins when I was asking her to walk forward she would only listen to my voice she wouldn't listen to pressure whenever you put pressure with your leg that's when she was like no so I decided to teach her that she had to learn that pressure from the leg was a thing and she had to behave um so this was kind of a few weeks after I feel like I cracked her um because a lot of the time my dad was just stood there gobsmacked like oh my god she's moving she's behaving um so I just focused on keeping her forward, getting it off her back, and she just started getting better and better. And the one thing I learned about Q was she flipping loved jumping more than anything. All she wanted to do was go over poles. Um, so as you can see, her jumping was the easiest part of her education. Um, she had one hell of a buck on her, um, but it wasn't nasty. She never once tried to get me off. And that was the one thing I always say about Keita. It was weird. It wasn't like, I don't want you to get off on, I don't want you to ride me. It was, I don't want to go forward. Um, and I spoke to lots of different kind of horsemanship people who said, a lot of horses just don't like the leg and they, especially mares, don't like being told when to go forward. Um, and I feel like, yeah, maybe the year in the field didn't do anything, but in a way, I feel like it just made her grow up and mature mentally. So I was also wanted to add that um, Q 
didn't have kissing spine. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, has this horse got kissing spine? She does not. She has the most beautiful spine and x-rays, um, which was the biggest relief to me ever. Um, so things started getting really good. Um, she was the most cool mare to ride and I felt like it was all worth the wait. And I had so, so much fun on her um, all kind of through 2018, 2019, um, up to when kind of Champ was being ready to be backed. Um, I then got married, went to America, came back, and this was kind of this kind of time, and she was going super well, and we started thinking about taking her to some clear rounds, um, so we did that, she was brilliant, I went to some clinics, she was absolutely fabulous, um, and things were just on the up. Um, so November 2019 came along, um, so this is kind of, I'm kind of fast forwarding and my voice over here, but just while these clips are playing and you can see how she's progressing, um, I had a accident with Champ where I didn't do the girth up properly and I fell off and ended up completely unconscious and in hospital. Um, I had to not ride for 12 weeks and then that took us to COVID. COVID then happened and my God, didn't we know about it? Um, I was working full time at the time at a vet, whilst also trying to finish my uni degree. It was just stressful, so the horses um, took a bit of a back seat. Um, and then when we kind of decided we weren't going to be competing either of them that year, we decided to A, stand champ at stud, and B, put Keita in foal. So I did not stop riding Keita because she went lame. I stopped riding because of circumstances and COVID. So time for another baby queue so fast forward a whole 11 months and here is my first ever champ baby um so this was kind of like the process of full watch um she ended up having Kyra in the field after us literally staring at her for about a week. Um, my mum ran me and was like, oh my God, she's falling in the field. So um, we all rushed down and just let her get on with it. And oh my God, the most beautiful, beautiful filly, um, who I can't decide whether she looked like Champ or Keita. She was a real mix of them both. Um, so here's kind of like a really short um, insight into, into what Kyra was like. And this was her first kind of 24 hours. She sold to a wonderful home where she's hopefully going to be a show jumper for an amazingly talented little rider pippa so if you're watching this pippa hello and please share um all of your kyra journey with everybody i can't wait i'm so proud of you all um and she went off to her new home in the kind of october of that year and then we put her back in fall and this was the outcome literally a champ filly i couldn't believe it she was like the clone of champ and I'm, i spoke about boo in my previous video um and oh god her and kyra have literally made me the most proudest breeder in the whole world um the fact that i bred the mum and the dad and gave them the both the best start in life with the help of my amazing mum and dad honestly it makes me emotional watching this um and keita was just in the most incredible mum I could have ever wished for. Um, anyway, during this whole kind of process last summer, we were planning on putting Keita back in foal. Anyway, it turned out Keita actually had like a grumbling infection from foaling, um, which she was displaying no symptoms of until we then attempted to put her in foal. Um, so after antibiotics, flushing out, da da da, um, she didn't take and we decided um, it was a sign she needed a break and that was that um and then me luke and dan were talking and we thought you know what why don't we see if she kind of wants to be ridden again because i was going off to vet school life was going to get more difficult um so we were going to give it a go i had no idea after three years whether she'd remember what i taught her or whether you know she'd just be the same as when i first backed her so it was a massive risk so a lot of the Q&As I had on Instagram was how we prepared Heater to be ridden again um, post foaling. Um, originally, like after Lola, we did lots of long reining, lunging, walking in hand, um, and I actually did some physio exercises with her, just getting her kind of core engaging in walk. Um, so after that, Luke uh, was the first one to get on her after three years, and she was an angel. Um, and she seemed to pretty much remember the drill of going off the leg and not throwing her toys out the pram, but we literally only walked her and did like a tiny bit of trot this day. Um, I was very proud of Luke because 
he isn't quite as confident as you guys remember him from back in the old YouTube days. So this was a massive deal for him, getting on a kind of green horse after three years when having foals. You can see she has a little moment there, but he just sits quietly and off she goes. So we were over the moon. Um, so after this video, a few weeks later, she got dropped off at Dan and Luke's yard. She's not far from me. Um, and yeah, they started to get to work and it's been a roller coaster. Um, she hasn't been that bad, like she's not been super naughty, but she has tested us, well, Dan in particular, um, with just kind of being a little bit um, sassy and definitely, you know, showing us that she's still a very quirky mare. Um, but Dan has been so unbelievably patient with her, I cannot even begin to explain the incredible job he's done and Luke too mainly on the ground because obviously Dan's kind of the one who's going to be competing her mainly um, but Luke's also been hacking her um, she is just being a bit of a sass pants um, but Dan is the most beautifully quiet and patient rider as you guys can see so Q has been with Dan and Luke about eight weeks now and they've literally taken things right back to the beginning and are kind of reintroducing her to jumping and everything as if she was a four-year-old, um, which has just been the completely correct way to do it. Um, and she's been loving the jumping. Um, she's been a little bit naughty on the one side of the arena. She doesn't like this drop um, and she's been a right pain in the ass. But other than that, she has been really good. And I'm just over the moon seeing her do something and seeing, um, you know, my two really good friends having a great time with her because, you know, I didn't breed her to be a brood mare. That was never the plan. Um, I wanted her to have a career and unfortunately I have not got the time um, to ride two horses at the moment. I've got a lot going on and you know it's just wonderful seeing her progress and I just am so happy. Um, so as you can see she's starting to become more kind of um, connected from the leg to hand and less resistant to Dan um, and he's just such a brilliant rider. I mean you only need to watch this video to kind of see how fab he is at what he does um here's some videos of her hacking um but yeah she's just doing really well so this is it really is just the beginning and we are going to just be completely open-minded as to what Keita is going to achieve the aim is for her to be eventing this year um but then is no pressure we're just going to take a step at a time um and dan will know when she's ready i'm literally putting it just in their hands um i trust them with my life and with any of my horses and i'm so grateful for what they're doing with keita um so this was her first time away from home with dan um she was great again very kind of spooky at certain moments a bit cat leafy over some of the jumps which is one thing she does do with fillers which we sh shall be working on and kind of um just exposing her to new things all the time um but she really enjoyed it and you know Dan said it was much easier riding her in a bigger space because she has actually got quite a big canter even though she's only about 15 through 16 hands and um, she has got quite a big stride um so yeah the other issue they've had is loading now Keita never used to be a particularly bad loader she was always a bit slow um, but since having babies she's decided that she doesn't want to go on a trailer she's never liked lorries and we've had people have her before that couldn't get her on a lorry. Um, we couldn't really get her on our lorry very easily. Um, so we ended up getting a trailer and she was okay. Um, but this got progressively worse um, since not going on one for years. And Luke and Dan have had to spend a lot and lot of time standing in this position, giving her again lots of patience and um, just kind of repetition repetition and touch wood they seem to have cracked it so again boys amazing like well done <laughs> um i did not have the time to do this so again i'm just so grateful that they have um and as you watch her kind of progress in these videos you can see how much more established she's looking how much stronger she's looking and i'm just in awe of dan and how he rides like he is just so such a professional and um He's also a fantastic coach. If you probably watch my other vlog, he's helped me in so many ways to get my confidence back with Champ. Um, and yeah, so watch this space. Um, I've got a really good feeling about this little horse and I'm gonna be the proud owner and the proud breeder alongside Debbie while we watch her develop with Dan. Um, so we'll keep you fully informed 
along the way. Um, there's lots planned over the next few months and I'll be kind of going along and spectating and vlogging what Keita is getting up to. Um, this was her first time doing arena eventing and um, they were chuffed. She was very spooky and thought what on earth are they? But straight over the brush, clever girl. Um, and Dan was really pleased. So this was again, a massive step. She'd never done anything like this before. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and also follow us on Instagram. And yeah, see you soon.